Praise the Lord. Welcome back to Chapel of the Shepherd. Hi, I'm Pastor Phelan Decimal with you again today. And we're going to pick up with Joseph and how he gets back at his brothers. Remember, they went down to Egypt to purchase grain because of the famine. And we're going to pick up in chapter 42 where Joseph kind of gets back at his brothers for selling them off to the Egyptians. And it'll be quite interesting, I think. And with that, Lord, just open our eyes and our ears this day, Lord. Let us see your word for its truth and its wisdom and meaning in it. And we thank you and let us share this with the world, Lord. In Jesus' name, in the name of Yahweh and Yeshua, praise the Lord. Amen. All right, let's get right into it. All right, chapter 42, verse 1. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, why do ye look one upon another? Two, and he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither, and buy for us from hence, that we may live and not die. The Lord made it. I don't know this was going to be this way. And so there, there's no food practically anywhere around. So they're going to have to go to Egypt to get their stuff. Continue. Three, and Joseph's Ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. For but Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, Lest peradventure mischief befall him. 5. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn, among whose that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. 6. And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he... And he it was that sold to the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. Now see, at this point in time now, they don't know that Joseph is the brother. All they know is that he's going to treat them, they're going to, they're going to find out. He's going to treat them a little bit on the, on the downside to kind of get even with them for what they did, but... It'll all reconcile out in the end. Amen. To continue, verse 7. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly with, unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And then 8. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. 9. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, Ye are spies, to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. 10. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. 11. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. He's getting, got, got him on the run now. He's getting, getting them good. We continue, verse 12. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye have come. 13. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father. The one is not. See, they don't know he's the one that's not because he's got himself concealed to them. 14. And Joseph said unto them, that is, that is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies. 15. Whereby ye shall be proved by the life of Pharaoh, ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. I ain't got him in, put him in a bind. 16. Send one of you, and let him fetch your brother, and ye shall be kept in prison that your words may be proved, whether they be any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely ye are spies. 17. And he put them all together in inward three days. 18. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. 19. And if ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye carry corn for the famine of your houses. 20. 
but bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. 21. And they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Wherefore is this distress come upon us? 22. And Reuben answered that, saying against the child, And ye would not hear. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. Things start, sound like starting to get serious. 23. And then knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. Uh, pretty clever, actually. 24. And he turned himself about from them and wept and returned to them again and communed with them and took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes. See, it was enough. that it was, He was just emotional about that. He had to actually leave their presence and go weep over the situation. <clears throat> Continue. 25. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man his money man's money into his sack and to give them provision for the way and thus did he unto them he's even doing them right and they don't even realize that he he's, it's in his power to do however he wants with them 26 and they laid their asses with corn and departed thence 27 and as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender in the end he espied his money for, behold, it was in his sack's mouth. So they, they stuck the money back in there without him knowing it. And when he went to, to feed their asses, all of a sudden there's his money. Now he's probably going to be worried about that. 28. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their hearts failed them, for they were afraid, saying one to another, what is this that God hath done unto us? Let's see, well, for one, God didn't do anything unto them. Their own actions made what happened happen. God just allowed some things. 29. And they came unto Jacob, their father, befell, uh, oops. They came unto Joseph, their father, unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that befell unto them, saying, 30. The man who is the Lord of the land spake roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. 31. And we said unto him, We are true men. We are no spies. 32. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father. One is not and the youngest this day with our father in the land of Canaan. 33. And the man, the Lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me and take food for the famine of your households and be gone. 34. And bring your youngest brother unto me. Then shall I know that we are no spies, but that we are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. In other words, if they traffic in the land, there is if they do what he says, they'll have free reign to travel through and back and forth through the country. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to. Not without risk of taking their lives in their hands. Okay, 35. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And it's in, it's in, feel like I was being set up or something, I would think. 36. And Jacob their father said unto them, We have ye bereaved of my children. Joseph is not, and Simeon is not, and ye will take Benjamin away. All these things are against me. 37. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. Just let me let me handle it, Dad. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it and uh, I'll make sure he comes back. Last verse in this chapter, 38. 
And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If mischief befall him by the way in the which you go, then shall ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. And yeah, just, just put him in his grave. It'll, it'll hit him so hard if something happens to Benjamin. But it's, it's just the way things are with, with the actions that have taken place in the past. And he, and he thinks that Jacob thinks that Joseph is dead. When actually Joseph is manipulating things at the moment. And it gets better. To continue, chapter 43, verse 1. And the famine was sore in the land, too. And it came to pass, when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, Go again, buy us a little food. 3. And Judah spake unto him, saying, The man did solemnly protest unto us, saying, You shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. You got nothing coming unless you come with your brother. You won't even see me. You won't get nothing, and you'll go back empty-handed. Four, if thou wilt send our brother with us, we will go down and buy thee food. Five, but if thou wilt not send him, we will not go down. For the man said unto us, Ye shall not see my face, except your brother be with you. He was intent on that. Six, and Israel said, Wherefore dealt ye so ill with me as to tell the man whether ye had yet a brother? He said, Well, why, why, why are you giving out the family secrets? You know, why do you even let them know? And, well, he couldn't find out. So, and they said, The man asked us straightly of our state and of our kindred, saying, Is your father yet alive? Have ye another brother? And we told him according to the tenor of, his, of these words, could we certainly know that he would say, bring your brother down? They just answering him, being honest with, with him, asking him about it and how, how he said it. And just, that's the way it is. Okay, eight to continue. And Judah said unto Israel his father, send the lad with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die, both we and thou, and also our little ones. It's like, look, Dad, we know we need we need food. You know, you got to send us send us down there. Let us take care of this business. And we'll we'll see to it that when you come back, just send us down. Nine, I will be surety for him. Of my hand shalt thou require him, if I bring him not unto thee and set him before thee. Then let me bear the blame forever. And he's saying, you know, in order to get to him, get to Benjamin dead, they're going to have to come through me first. And I'm going to lay down my life if I have to. But that won't be required. Ten, to continue. For except we had lingered, surely now we had returned the second time. Ten. Eleven, shoot me. And their father Israel said unto them, if must be so now, do this. Take of the best fruits in the land in your vessels and carry down the man a present, a little balm, a little honey, spices, and myrrh, nuts, and almonds. He's hooking him up a nice big fruit basket. <laughs> Amen. All right, continue. Verse 12. And take double money in your hand and the money that was brought again in the mouth of your sacks. Carry it again in your hand. For adventure, it was an oversight. I mean, take take caution just in case they just forgot to get the money at the time. Let's see if they get it back. Smart, it's being smart actually. 13. Take also your brother and arise, go again unto the man. See, they still don't know it's Joseph. 14. And God Almighty give you mercy before the man that he may send away your other brother and Benjamin. If I be bereaved of my children, I am bereaved. 15. And the men took the present, and they took double money in their hand, and Benjamin, and rose up and went down to Egypt, and stood before Joseph, still not knowing that it's his brother. 16. And when Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the ruler of his house, 
bring these men home and slay and make ready, for these men shall dine with me at noon. In other words, he's telling them, you know, go, 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 go make some food ready. Get it ready for we're going to have lunch. And put out the spread. And the man did as Joseph bade, and the man brought the men into Joseph's house. 18. And the men were afraid because they were brought into Joseph's house, and they said, because of the money that was returned in our sacks at the first time we are we brought in, that he may seek occasion against us and fall upon us and take us for bondmen and our asses. He's going to take everything we got and make us slaves. 19. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house, trying to find out what's going on, exactly going on. 20. And said, O oh, sir, we came indeed down at the first time to buy food. 21. And it came to pass, when we came to the inn, that we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sacks, our money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand. We, we, we don't want to get accused of trying to rip somebody off. 22. And other money have we brought down in our hand to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. 23. And he said, Peace be to you, fear not. Your God and the God of your fathers had given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money, and he brought Simeon out unto them. 24. And the man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet, and he gave their asses provender. 25. And they made ready the presents against Joseph, came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. 26. And Joseph came home, and they brought him the present, which was in their land, hand, into the house, and bowed themselves to him, to the earth. And he spake, you know, excuse me, 27, and he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom ye spake? Is he yet alive? He's trying to find out, man, is my dad still even living? I ain't seen him in, what, this 20 years or whatever it is? What's up? 28, and they answered, Thy servant, our father, is in good health, and he's yet alive. And they bowed down their heads and made obscience. In other words, they were giving him the utmost respect and courtesies and that because they're fearing for their lives. 29. He lift up his eyes and saw his brethren, brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom you spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son. 30. And Joseph made haste for his bowels did yearn upon his brother, and he sought where to weep, and he entered into his chamber and wept there. He just, it's just tearing him up to not let them know who he is. 31. And he washed his face and went out and reframed himself and said, Set on bread. 32. And they set on for him by himself and for them by themselves, and for the Egyptians which did eat with him by themselves, because the Egyptians might not eat bread with the Hebrews, for that is an abomination unto the Egyptians. So they had their own customs and that, so he just s s basically segregated them all into their own little groups and, and let them take bread. 33. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth, and the men marveled one at another. Final verse, verse 34. And he took and sent messes unto them from before him, and Benjamin's mess was five times so much as any of theirs. And they drank and were merry with him. So they, they, they finally start to calm down and have a decent time and just relax a little bit. Continue. Chapter 44, verse 1. And he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, 
and his corn money, and he did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. And now he's cooking up a little scheme here. He's going to put a little, cause a hair in their necks to stand up a couple times, I'll bet. Amen. Lord knows what he's doing, though. Lord always knows what he's doing. Three. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, them and their asses. Four. And when they were gone out of the city, and not yet far off, Joseph said unto his steward, Follow up after the men, and when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, and then get ready to set them up now. Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Five. Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh, and whereby indeed he divideth? Ye have done evil in so doing. They haven't done anything wrong, but they're going to be accused of it. Six. And he overtook them, and he spake unto them these same words. Seven. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? God forbid that thy servant should do according this, to this thing. Eight. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths we brought again unto thee out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal out of our Lord's house silver and gold? Well, they're about to find out. Nine. With whomsoever of thy servants it be found both, let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondsmen. We'll kill whoever's guilty, and we'll be your, we'll be your slaves. Ten. And he said, Now also let it be according unto your words. He with whom it is found shall be my servant, and ye shall be blameless. Eleven. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground and opened every man his sack. Yeah, they're going to pilfer through it and find. Twelve. And he searched and began at the eldest and left at the youngest, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack, right where they set him up. Thirteen. Then they rent their clothes and laid every man his ass and returned to the city. Fourteen. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house, for he was yet there, and they fell before him on the ground. Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? What ye not that such a man as I can certainly divine? And I asked him the question. 16. And Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how shall we clear ourselves? God hath found out the iniquities of thy servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also with whom the cup is found. Well, they, they put themselves in that position by saying what they said. They should have just let him go about the business he was going to. And it, it still it turned out just the way it was supposed to be. And Joseph's going to have his way with him. 17. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. 18. Then Judah came near unto him and said, O my Lord, let thy servant, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not thine anger burn against thy servant, for thou art even as Pharaoh. In other words, he, he, he had pull. 19. My Lord asked his servant, saying, Have ye a father or a brother? And we said unto my Lord, We have a father, an older man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother, and his father loveth him. 21. And thou sayest unto thy servant, Bring him down unto me, that I may set mine eyes upon him. 22. And we said unto my Lord, The lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. 23. And thou sayest unto my servant, Except your youngest brother come down with you, ye shall see my face no more. And if you, you got nothing coming, you all go back and starve, because you ain't getting none from me. 
and he meant it. 24, and it came to pass when we came up upon thy servants, my father, we told him the words of my Lord. 25, and our father said, go again and buy us a little food. And we said, we cannot go down if our younger brother be with us. Then we will go, then we will go down. For we may not see the man's face, except our younger brother be with us. He done told us, bring him with or don't bother. 27. And thy servant, my father, said unto us, We know that my mother bare me two sons. 28. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I saw him not since. 29. And if we take this also from me, and mischief befall him, ye shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. In other words, that would be enough, that would just kill me. So, if you take a man and, he, and something happens, I won't make it. He loved him that much, apparently. 30. Now therefore I come to thy servant, my father, and the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life. 31. And it shall come to pass, when he seeth that the lad is not with us, that he will die, and thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. 32. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto thy, my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. 33. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman, to my lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren. 34. And the final chapter here. The final verse in chapter 44. For how shall I go up to my father, and the lad be not with me? Lest peradventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. 45, verse 1. Then Joseph could not reframe himself before all them that stood by, stood by him, and he cried, Cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. Get out, get out. He can't take it no more. He's got, he's got to let him know who he is. Two, and he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. Three, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. They're still not believing it. They, they still think he's just a man who's in charge. And he, you know, he's saying, saying, I'm your brother. Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. 5. And therefore be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves, that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. He remembered the dreams. He knew the Lord had a, had a purpose for him, and that he was going to be the one that's going to be where he's at. 6. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. 7. And God sent me before you to preserve you a prosperity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance, giving you a place to go get your grain. 8. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. In other words, I'm, I'm, I'm king stuff. It, he gave me the power. And here we are. 9. Haste ye, and go up to my father, and say unto him, Thus saith thy son Joseph, God hath made me lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry not. Get down here. Don't don't waste no time. Just you just go do it. Ten, and thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near unto me 
thou and thy children and thy children's children and thy flocks and thy herds and all that thou hast. 11. And there I will nourish thee, for yet there are five years of famine, lest thou and thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. In other words, without me, you, you, your life is up, as good as up before this five years is up, because there's still five years of famine yet to go. 12. And behold, your eyes see in the eyes of my brother Benjamin that it is my mouth that speaketh unto you. 13. And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of all that ye have seen, and ye shall haste and bring down my father hither. You're going to go tell him what, just what's what, and you're going to tell him, get on your mule or your ass or your camel and just get down there. 14. And he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept upon his neck. 15. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them, and after that his brethren talked with him. 16. And fame thereof was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brethren are come, and it pleased Pharaoh well and his servants. 17. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Say unto thy brethren, This do ye, laid your breast, lay, laid your beast, and go, get you unto the land of Canaan. 18. And take your father and your household, and come unto me, and I will give you the good of the land of Egypt, and ye shall eat the fat of the land. 19. Now thou art commanded this do ye, take you wagons out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. 20. Also regard not your stuff, for the good of all the land of Egypt is yours. In other words, don't worry about anything you got. You, you get back, you got the whole run of everything. 21. And the children of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them wagons according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the way. 22. To all them that he gave each man changes of raiment, but to Benjamin he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of raiment. And he's just laying it on Benjamin. 23. And to his father he sent after this manner ten asses laden with the good things of Egypt and ten she asses laden with corn and bread and meat for his father by the way. So he was taking care, taking care of the old man all the way up. Hey, we'll feed you all the way and everything. You don't have nothing to worry about. 24. So he, he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said unto them, See that ye fall not by the, out by the way. 25. Now be real careful on the way so nothing happens to nobody. 25. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father. This is 26. And he told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive, and he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, and he believed them not. 27. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. He just, man, they just gave him that pick, up, pick me up he needed. And the final verse here in 45, verse 28. And Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. And yeah, right, we're gonna we're gonna stop right there. We'll pick up again next time, chapter forty six, and see the reunion of Israel and Joseph. It'll be quite interesting. And with that, stick with the Lord's word. Get in it every day. Study, study hard. Love the Lord. Love your neighbor. Love and take care of yourself. And with that. We'll see you the next time at the chapel, and have a great day. God bless.